Hi everyone, it's Quickie Baby, and welcome back to World of Tanks, and specifically welcome back to my video series where I play live on YouTube without the ability to cherry pick games. Today I'm going to be playing all of the most popular tier 8 tanks in the game, and I'm not going to be just playing premium vehicles, it's going to be tech tree tanks so it can actually be vehicles that all of you can get irrelevant of jumping through hoops, sometimes waiting for your favourite premium vehicles to be available, and even if you've got the cash. So firstly, I'm going to be playing in the Indian Panzer, this is the tier 8 German medium tank and the Indian Panzer is pretty darn underrated I feel inside World of Tanks. Sure it's not really like a Borask, it's not really like a variety of really good medium tanks like the 122 TM for example but the Indian Panzer is still no slouch and also do you know what today might be a really good day to play the Indian Panzer because there are G-saws in the game. That's right I put out my review of the G-saw yesterday if I end up releasing this video on Friday, which I'm pretty sure I will end up doing, uh, and the G-Saw has absolutely awful armor, and the Indian Panzer actually has really good high explosive rounds. In fact, I'm actually going to drop coated optics here, and I'm going to end up using a durability device on the Indian Panzer, because I feel like this map is more about brawling rather than spotting, but maybe I'll regret that later on if I have to try and spot. So, one of the most important skills that you can get on the Indian Panzer is intuition. And that's because it has a variety of great rounds. 218 pen, 1,000 meters a second shell velocity there. 259 with 1,250. But look at these HE shells. 330 alpha with 90 millimeters of penetration. That is as much as a tier 10 big old derpy gun that you get on like one of the tank destroyers, like the T124. Although, yeah, we're not hitting for 1,100 like we would be on the T124. Nevertheless, these rounds can do really well indeed. And there is the first G-Saw. Now, there's multiple ways that I could play this map. I could make my way up towards the north and try and fight the heavy tanks up there, but BZ-176 versus Indian Pans, bleh, no thank you. So I think I've actually... Oh, no. Oh, no. Okay, you know what? Maybe I will go up. <laughs> Maybe I will go up towards the north. Looks like the BZ-176 missed. Um... But, you know what, I think it's actually best if I go up north anyway now. Now that I know that BZ-176 is there, there might be a good opportunity to, um, to try and just help my allies. So you can actually make it up here with most tanks, but oh gosh, am I going to be able to make it up with the engine panzer? Yeah, I can. Cool. That's nice. Just do a little bit of a wiggle there. There's actually a way to just cut across that whole area. Now, I wouldn't recommend driving there and then going up unless you really were very confident in your ability to make that slope. Gosh, geez, so that's a big old butt, isn't it? It really is a big old butt. Um, I wouldn't really recommend going that way uh, unless you're really confident with your ability to boost up. I kind of want the enemies to push here, but now that they've spotted me, oh, they're not really going to, are they? The T-832 is exposing his turret to the side. Uh-oh. I've got the rate of fire on him, though, so as long as like his Ayanani friend doesn't come around the corner and blast me, which of course he's going to, I should be okay. Ah, uh, definitely not the best trades of my life, but at least the Ayanani's lost a thousand hit points driving in front of us there. Um, gonna be quite tricky because I just don't really have any turret armor on this tank, neither does the G-Saw. The T-832 keeps aiming at me, I'm not really gonna be able to deal with him there. Oh gosh, am I gonna have to drop back here just to make sure I don't get caught? Possibly. With the Indian Panzer, a lot of people really struggle in it, and look, don't get me wrong, it's not the uh, best vehicle you're ever going to play. It doesn't really have that many special things. One thing that a lot of people don't realize about the Indian Panzer is, do you see how the hull is slanted? Just like a Centurion, which means that you can actually end up over-angling this vehicle. Uh, I really can't imagine getting forwards um, in front of these players, but if this T-832 comes around... All right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just trust this 56 TP that he's going to help me out. I'm just going to trust him. I reckon, he'll, I reckon he'll play. I reckon he'll play. Come on. Come on, Carnarvon. We can do this. Get behind them before they manage to push through against us. Oh, no. Why did I take that shot against the T-832? I don't understand why these heavies won't push. Is it because they're so worried about an IS-3A? Okay, the G-Saw's gone in. He's taken a shot. i got to try and make a shot as well. But this thing, it's just so dominant on a ridgeline, the T-832. And the tier 8 heavies are just not pushing, which means that I'm in, like, a real sticky situation here. As soon as I go up, this T-832 is not an idiot. I just wish this Carnarvon would come around the corner and start farming this American bottom. Come on. That's better. That's right. Now surely he has to turn around. Or is he even going to turn around? He's a bit panicky now. He's getting farmed by the highest damage per minute tier 8. Well played to that Carnarvon. 
And you know what? Also, well played to this T832. The way that he handled the situation was just... It was just good. He's turning towards me. He's like, screw you, Indian Panzer. Obviously, he just doesn't like Germans. It's a bit harsh, isn't it? Well played. Good job by my team to be able to get through this one. This was a really nice performance by them. Obviously, the 56 TP doesn't believe that he wants to shoot the AMX here. And I'm going to try and go for a tracking shot. You can't even track people with durability devices these days. Who's this guy going to shoot? The KV-4 or is he just going to aim for me again? Okay, never mind. Looks like the ELC is going to pay the ultimate price. I don't know what that ELC was doing. Maybe it's just waiting to go around the corner. And this is where the engine panzer gets really good. Nice damage per minute on this vehicle. 2,083 with a gun rammer and vents and durability, which is the build that you see me using now. It's actually pretty darn good for brawling. But now the problem is, is that I don't have the coated optics. I'm not going to be able to spot my opponents at a decent distance. And my camera rating on this tank, yo, it's not good. We've got less than 9% camo base when moving. That is significantly worse than even the GSAW 1010, which definitely doesn't have the best camo. Okay, so I'm going to slinky down this slope. Um, really worried that I'm going to get spotted here, but I have to also get stuck in uh, because, uh, well, we outnumber our opponents. And if we outnumber our opponents, then, you know, the game's going to end pretty quick. But boy, a scorpion right now. Just one scorpion. They could be anywhere. Uh... It's going to be um, a, a German snack for a German. It's a German snack. It's funny enough, when I've had the pleasure of going to Gamescom a few times, I get to stay in Köln or Cologne, however you want to pronounce it. Um, and um, I, I've, I've managed to stay at a really nice hotel there once, which was called the Excelsior. And um, they always put these kind of like... Uh, wasabi coated peanuts in and I was like yes these are my jam I actually wrote like a message to the the um, what are they called concierge the, a person who re refills like the snacks in your room I wrote these were awesome more please happy face and to be fair he gave me like a lot for the rest of the, the rest of the trip so nice guy um Anyway, I digress. Let's not focus on German snacks. Let's focus on German tanks snacking on British tanks. Goodbye, Mr. G Saw 1010. Oh, no, Scorpion G. Maybe I finally get to use an HE shell this game, though. Oh, look at that. You see how quickly the damage adds up when you hit for 330. Intuition on this tank is a must, boys and girls. You must, 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 must use intuition on your Indian Panzer. Otherwise, you will have... He's missing potential, and you don't want to miss potential damage, do you? So easy. 1.15 seconds switch time for 330. Yeah, that's kind of like tier 10 damage per minute. It is. It's like having an Object 140, really, if the Object 140 had 10 extra alpha damage. I should have been a little bit more aggressive here into the uh, the final foray into my opponent's hit points. Maybe I can still hit this guy in the lower plate. Ah, ricochet. No more kills for Uncle Scrubby Baby. Oh, the G saw missed. Maybe a kill for Uncle Scrubby Baby then. Yeah, boy. This was a good game for the Indian Panzer. Where do you think their Scorpion is? I got a funny feeling he's sneaking around over there. I'll take 2,400 combined for this tank any day and three kills. It's good stuff. Um, I could have had a little bit more if that uh, T832 wasn't so irritating. So the ISU 152 died, so we don't exactly have to be uh, James Bond to figure out where the Scorpion would be. But Oh, I didn't expect him to actually be all the way over there. I thought he'd be more where the ELC is, where the ELC was last spotted. So yeah, all in all, Indian Panzer. I can see why a lot of people play this. Um, also, let's be honest, the top of the tree, the fact that the Leopard was top of the tree last month will be influencing people playing this tank. So there's no doubt about that, uh, that it will be artificially more popular because of that. Oh, everyone's shooting down the buildings, but no one actually hitting the ELC. No, don't let the Frenchie escape. Oh, no, that's a hard wall. We were unable to get it. Are we going to just have an awkward chase down here? This is actually such a losable game. It really is. Oh, no, my gun depression failed. I hit it, but ELC. Is he going to just hide in the corner now? Or is he going to have to try and run? He's going to have to try and run. Oh! Oh! Well, he's called Star Duck Lols. Well, pull! <laughs> oh, that was a good hit. That was a tricky one. Um, it's always so satisfying to hit those kind of shots. Possibly one of the hardest tanks in the game to be able to hit. I'd say it's even harder than an EBR to hit, really. Because an EBR is significantly bigger than a DLC. So we're we just going to spend the next few minutes actually just trying to hunt down this scorpion. This is unusual. Usually the games are so fast and we don't have these kind of like awkward hunt down moments. Especially when um, 
But we're all heavies. Should we just go and cap? If I cap, I reckon the scorpion will probably sneak up on me. But, like, we might not be able to find a scorpion. And remember, I'm not using coated optics. So what are the chances of me even being able to find him? Oh, well. They're giving us the runaround. Man, the scorpion G. Always a vehicle, which for me, I always used to be like, It's always a scorpion! It's always a scorpion! Because I always seem to get shot by scorpions. I have quite an aggressive playstyle in World of Tanks. You might have noticed that over the years. And, um... That does leave me vulnerable to tanks that uh, sit on the fringes, especially accurate tanks with big alpha and big pen that sit on the fringes. And also the Scorpion at one point was the most popular premium tank inside the game. It felt like everyone had one. I even made a video saying it was Wargaming's $50 million tank because I think that is how many Scorpions have probably sold worldwide outrageous to think that one vehicle inside this game, albeit a very well-selling premium vehicle, could have actually made that much money for wargaming over the years. Alright, so if I was a scorpion, where am I going to go? I mean, he could go up into this bush. He could go up into any bushes right now. Last thing I want to do is to get spotted. He could just waltz over the ridge. I, you know what? Respect to this scorpion, he's giving it blooming good go. And he's actually got a third of our team's hit points, even though we have six vehicles remaining. So you've got to be careful here. Although the Scorpion could just be hiding and trying to look after their hit points, but in this kind of a situation it's just not worth a risk. Plus, I feel like I've been um, faffing about too much in this German tank anyway. And um, it's about time to end this game. End this game. It'd be funny if he snuck up behind us. He might actually do that. He might have gone all the way around the back and sneak up behind us for this, rather than go over the ridge. Because the scorpion has seven degrees of gun depression over the side. Well, that's anticlimactic, isn't it? Why are you not playing with your full health tank? Oh, boo-hoo-hoo-hoo-hoo. -hoo -hoo -hoo. Anyway, that was the Indian Panzer. Now we're going to play the most popular tank destroyer, which is the Borsig. This is a fabulous tank destroyer inside World of Tanks. Um, I, I love the Borsig. There's two ways to play the Borsig. One is with the 128mm, and one is with the 150mm. Now, honestly, I think most people are going to do better. I'm definitely going to boost that game, by the way. Oh, yeah, let's get some boosts in. Ah, I might even get another field mod for the Indian Panzer. What are we going to take? Uh, we are definitely going to take camo here, even though... Hmm, that's actually a tricky one. Maybe you might want to even take the suspension repair speed. But then again, I'm going to take a durability device if I don't need the camo for my scouting build. Okay, I digress. So... The German Tier 8 Tech Tree Tank Destroyer, the Borsig. You can play this thing with the 128, you can play it with the 150. Honestly, both guns are really competitive on this tank. If you like to play more long range, the 128 is better. And if you're a free-to-play player who will never fire gold, the 128 is better. However, if you're a little bit filthy and a little bit sneaky, the 150 can actually be really funky because it's actually significantly lighter. I know, I'm not making a mistake there, but the 150mm on this tank, I swear it like shaves off like a ton or something. And the vehicle doesn't weigh very much to begin with. The vehicle only weighs like 18 tons. So you actually significantly improve this vehicle's power to weight ratio by using the bigger gun. And considering that the Borsig doesn't have the best power to weight at 11.79 effective, at least according to Tanks GG, then... You want to try and improve that as much as you can. Now I'm going to be using Gun Rammer, Turbo, and I'm going to be using Coated Optics on this tank, which will mean that I can spot for myself, and also the Turbo will help me to be able to improve the vehicle's rather low top speed limit of 35. And also this tank is limited to 12 backwards, and it's the kind of tank that, with its fully traversable turret, ends up rolling a little bit anyway, so reverse speed can help. And I'm sure a lot of YouTube comments will be like, oh my lord, how, what is this style for the Borsig? I don't know what the style is called, but I can tell you, it does look hella cool. It really does. Um, this one was available inside the premium store, uh, although it kind of sucks in a way because a lot of you might be thinking, oh, I want to buy that, and I think that's a perfectly valid response. Uh, and if people buying styles in World of Tanks is in no way pay to win, right? But for some reason, Wargaming don't want to make the styles available the whole time. Can you believe it's 2023 and we don't just have a style store? Everyone's begging to give Wargaming their money, at least for non-pay-to-win features, and they don't even have a style store inside the game. They've got hundreds of styles inside the game now. Imagine if they just put them in a store for like $10 a pop. 
they could make lots of money and it would also allow the game to monetize itself without actually being paid to win. Boom! Even games like League of Legends, for example, only pretty much monetize their game through styles and skins and making the, the characters look cool like that. Because you become so attached to those characters that you want to dress them up in pretty outfits, right? Uh, World of Tanks, some people become quite attached to the vehicles. So it's un understandable that people want to dress them up in pretty outfits or make them look really cool with like optics and camo nets and machine guns on top. Yes. Okay. You want some T30? I'll give it to you. Boom, baby. Yeah, he knew I was there. He knew I was there. Oh, wow. And that is what is good about this 150. Is that it hits very hard. It really, really, really slaps. It really, really, really claps. I would have loved to have reloaded an HE shell there for the SU. So again, this is a tank. Huh. Again, this is a tank that does really well with um, intuition. Another one, QB. Yeah, well, this vehicle has three different flavors of ammunition. AP, which can overmatch. Doesn't have the best of pen, but it's cheap. Heat, which is expensive, but 334 millimeters of pen is really, really nice for when you want to get through thickly armored plates. And the high explosive rounds hit harder at 950 with 85 millimeters of pen. So they're good for tanks that you otherwise couldn't pen. Or they're good for um, tanks that you can pen. What? I swear that was right at his tank. How does that one not hit? Uh-oh. Uh-oh. It's me and a century in 5-1. Oh, no. Little Borsig is about to cry some tears, I think. Oh, about to cry some tears, boys and girls. Oh. Oh, he hit me for 884 HE. What a savage. What a shot. Well played, Object 705A. Congrats to you, my dude. Now I don't even have any hit points to play around with anymore. Hopefully I can get a shot into the side of this guy's turret. The side of that guy's turret is incredibly weak on the 705A. Well, I guess my goose is cooked. My goose is well and truly cooked. Maybe I can get one more shot in. Maybe this guy doesn't realize it. No! Oh, well. Tried my best. Well played to the enemy team. Shame I only put in three shots and not four. If I'd hit four shots and I didn't low roll all of my shells, I would have done 3k damage. That is the Borsig in a nutshell. I might have done better at the end there with the 128 because I could have been more accurate and loaded gold. And I probably would have hit the 122 as well as also having higher damage per minute. But oh well, what are you going to do? Unfortunately, I've run out of premium consumables until next week where they're on sale by 50%, which I'm very much looking forward to. So I'm second on damage, second on experience. It wasn't a glorious game. Oh well, it happens. That's tier 10 matchmaking for you. Okay, so we played the medium. We've played the TD. Now let's play the heavy tank. Oh, it's the IS-3. This thing is a classic. I like the IS-3 inside the game. Uh, it used to be one of just the all-round greats. People used to play this thing a lot at, uh, in tank companies at tier 8. Oh, do I have another field mod available for the IS-3? Yeah, whatever. Let's do it. The final field mod. What am I going to take? Mobility or firepower? Definitely firepower on this tank. Uh, the firepower will very much help my gun handling or my rate of fire. I'm going to have the uh, the gun rammer in there. And then for my second build, I'll have the gun rammer in there. I don't think this thing really needs a turbo. It's kind of fast enough. I love the IS-3. I remember the first time I went to um, Belarus to see... Uh, uh, my future wife, uh, and I got to go to uh, the Stalin line, which is this kind of like buffer zone that they created between Belarus and, well, the Soviet Union used Belarus as a buffer zone between the, the, the proper part of the Soviet Union and uh, Germany. And there's a um, museum there where you can see lots of awesome vehicles, just oh, they're, they're very patriotic, everyone knows, like the Belarusians and the Russians with regards to their, their tanks. You can go and um, check out the IS-3 there. And I remember the first time I saw it. Oh, it just looks like such a great tank. It really does. Um, and this vehicle, this was actually just available after World War II. It was actually took part in the, the Victory Day parades in 1945. And it was very, very intimidating to um, the West 
that Soviet tank design had arguably got just as good, if not better, than uh, Western tank design at that particular period. Uh, such a, it had the a big gun on it, uh, and something that could be able to deal with any of sort of like the the Western tanks. And its armor, very efficient, angled, low silhouette. And it uh, made a lot of the uh, Allied commanders nervous at the Victory Day Parade. Didn't quite manage to hit that EBR. So much so that the, the Brits started on like a quest to be able to get bigger guns on the Centurion as quickly as they possibly could. And that's why you see the Conway. The Conway was kind of like this really awkward um, intermediate tank from eventually what would become the Conqueror, right? Where they were just like, let's try and get as big of a gun on a Centurion as we possibly can and make this horrendous turret in case there would be a standoff with the Soviet Union and these new well-armored tanks they were developing. And so the Conway was this like, yeah, knee-jerk reaction to the IS-3 in a way. Before then, it would eventually become the Conqueror, which then eventually would become your chieftain and so on and so forth with the whole FV-4202 and that kind of design from trans the period of changing the Centurions, which were the uh, British immediate post-war tanks. So, the IS-3 does mean a lot to me because it was one of the original tanks for the CIS server back in the day in 2010. 5100, you're trying to be sneaky. Nope. No sneakiness for you. That's a good tactic, though. I like it. He wanted to try and get up into those bushes, and then he wanted me to drive at him, and then he would have literally been able to take out my entire tank for probably only receiving two hits. But, luckily, the IS-3 was not having any of it. Got to be a little bit careful here, but I can still catch that guy's plate. Ah, nope. Okay, hurry two. That is quite an intimidating tank to play against. Very intimidating tank to play against. Luckily, he's undergunned. He doesn't have the big gun. He actually got a shot into my lower plate there. I'm quite surprised. Okay, so when you're playing the IS-3 in this kind of hold-down situation, you've got to be a little careful because they can overmatch the top of your turret. But it is quite a small target to hit, especially if you're using your gun depression. So you might as well just sit hold down if you can sit hold down. I'm a little bit worried that the enemies are going to overwhelm us here, and it would be so much better if I fell back and made sure that I was in this kind of dip area. In fact, I am not feeling comfortable in this position with the 56 TP. So I'm actually going to start to uh, I'm going to start to fall back now. Um, I'm going to tell these guys to fall back as well. Uh, I'm telling you to fall back, not push forwards, dude. And I think, like, I'll be in a better position over here. That 5100 is just so scary. And I feel like it's better if we just try and get some spotting. Um, SU-130 PM, uh, can you su support Woods? I'm just going to see if I can tell the SU-130 PM to come and get, like, a little bit of a defensive location. I'm happy I fell back there, otherwise this Cheeto and friends would be really able to have a go at me. Okay, so in this kind of a position, it's kind of like the dream for the IS-3 now. Now I've got everyone in front of me. Hopefully, I'll have them all spotted for all of my TDs. The only problem is this thing is not accurate. Um, guys, come snipe, snipe woods. Hopefully, these guys will come and snipe woods in a second. Wow, I'm really happy that I decided to fall back. And you see that my whole team uh, is not as smart. Unfortunately, I think I might get overwhelmed. Oh, I should have shot his lower plate and not his tracks there. At least the SU is starting to listen. Okay, let's see if we can get some snipes going here. Wow, that aim time is horrendous. Just to clarify, this is with vert stabs as well. Okay, as long as the SU can come and help me out here, we should be okay. Can hit the side of that guy's turret. Not quite though. Thank you. All right. Well, let's see if the IS-3 can hold back all of these tanks. I've got to try and keep them up in this spotted area here. Nice. So I'm happy with my decision making in this game. I want my allies to fall back. I didn't just use them and abuse them. And now I've got the enemies right where I want them where they're unable to push. 
The only problem now is, is that if the enemies manage to get behind us, then we will be in a lot of trouble. So you shouldn't always just immediately fall back into this position. What an overmatch. Let's go, boys and girls. Oh, come on, Arty. You can kill that T-29. Looks like the Hori 2 just slipped down the slope. If I avoid his weak point... Oh, sorry, the extra plate. On the front of the IS-3, these actually count as 20 millimeters more armor. You can see the whole of the enemy team is now forced to attack me. It's just a driver. I don't need a driver right now. I'm fine without a driver. If I was to lose my gunner or my loader, it would be more significant. Well, unfortunately, my team didn't manage to hold the other flank, which is a little bit of a pain. Is that VK just going to drive in front of me now? I still don't feel like I need my driver right now. So I'm going to get my gun on the front. I have to start. I'm going to have to load gold now, unfortunately. This is my last LP round. Well, this has gone pretty darn well. Probably need to fire HE. Well, they knocked out my gun. I need my gun. G2SP finally hit me. It's nice, got him as well. Oh, G2SP, can you chill out? Okay, I might heal my driver now, actually. Come on, babe. That G2SP is so irritating. I'm okay, though. I wonder if I can get behind this bush and not get spotted by the G2SP. Gosh darn it, Yank Panther. Do I have to retake the hill? I think I have to retake the hill then. Because that FE4202 will be behind me soon. Um, so I'm going to have to retake the hill. I think it's my only chance. And then hopefully I can turn around to deal with everyone. Oh no! Can you believe it? That is a disaster of disasters, boys and girls. Come on, Artie, please finish him off. Artie, please finish him off. I have to get his lower plate again by the looks of it. Well, he took his merry sweet time in finishing him off, didn't he? Okay, I guess I have to go back now, or do I fight the 53 TP? You know what, I'm going to leave the 53 TP on the hill because I've got very poor view range, and um, I'm going to have to get back to try and defend. Well, I created a graveyard up here, didn't I? Um, oh my word, the SU, I think he just hit someone in the cap. That's amazing. This SU is doing a great job, actually. He's doing a great job. Wow, thank you. Wow, what a great job. I spot for you, mate. Help me get get 4202. How much HP 4202? Okay, here we go. Uh, how do I just ask him to come with me? You can't tell people. Gonna have to take the risk. I'm spotted. There he is. Nice. Oh no, Yag Panther gets me. That means I don't have the hit points to push this guy anymore. Nice, he's got him. Help me. Help me, help me, help me. Come, mate. Fifty-three TP is going to shoot me in the butt soon. I can hear the fifty-three TP missing us. Go on, dude, get him. I'm going to turn my arm around to the fifty-three TP. Let's go, cat. Go, cat, friend. Wow, these are some spicy games for YouTube. Oh my lord. Oh man. Oh man. Oh man, oh man. Wow, my uh, live video in the tier 7 was really good. If anyone watched that video, if you didn't, you missed a natural Faden's medal. We're having a little bit of a stressor here. Come with me. We cap and win.
I'm not taking the risk of in, if in, even if it is a red player. Let's go cap and win. Also, I've just been playing World of Tanks really well recently. I don't know why. It's because I've been no-lifing this game a lot, even during the summer, because I'm a bit of a weirdo. Um, spoilers uh, for YouTube. Uh, I got a new experience... Sorry, new damage record. I got a new damage record uh, in World of Tanks just the other day. I can tell you it was in the Kampfpanzer, the new Kampfpanzer. I'm not going to tell you exactly how much damage it was, although I'm sure that you could probably go and find out if you were to watch my Twitch VODs. But, um, yeah. So, setting new records in World of Tanks in the last in the last week. This was a cracking game for the IS-3. Why I enjoy the IS-3. It's just this kind of, like, impervious, sit-in-a-position kind of tank. It's still a performer. You, obviously, in a matchup like this, it's a lot easier to perform. Uh than if you're playing against tier 10 tanks. Although I did get to play the the Borsig against tier 10 tanks, but if I'm going to have one tier 10 matchup in all of the vehicles I'm going to play today, I would want it to be that one. I had some long games today. Let's just cap. Cap together. Just got to cap together. Come on. Just cap. Are you going to make me cap? So he's going to make me cap while he goes off to farm. Uh oh. What happens if he comes and kills me? Mate, if he if he comes and ki kills me, we lose. We lose. Just cap. Okay. Well, look. I'm not sure if hiding in the bushes is the correct play right now. Because if, this is so obvious to hide in the bushes. This guy's put me in like a lose-lose situation right now. Um, I'm going to load an HE shell, by the way. Um, so now... I'm a heavy tank with bad view range and bad camo. If I sit in the bush, I'm obvious for a blind fire. If this guy goes off to try and find him, I don't know what... this. S I'm sorry, this SU is a pretty bad player. I mean, he, he eventually did a good job with helping me on the hill, but just going and sitting there, it's so awful. It's really awful. It, now, if I get interrupted by the 53 TP, we could lose the game. Uh, if I get killed by the 53 TP, we lose the game as well. It's just... There are bad decisions in World of Tanks, and then there are what this SG-130PM is doing. My gosh. My gosh. You could cut the tension with a knife. I, I, I think the 53 TP will come back. He could blindfire the bush. Is it worth me leaving the bush right now that he is? Maybe the SG will kill him in the side. I guess he thinks he's a genius now for creating that crossfire. No, he's really not. He could have just come and sat in the cap circle and we would have won together. Still, great game for the IS-3. I'll take it. Really nice hill defense. This will most likely be an ace tanker for this vehicle. And it really shows you that even tech tree tanks can still hold their own against the newfangled premiums. As long as you be a little bit sneaky. Oh yeah, that is a... That is a, a game of games. 1,404 base experience. I'm not going to boost it because I'm going to be playing my G-Saw later on today. And I'm going to need the field mods on it. Um, yeah, what's there to say? Nearly 6,000 combined for an IS-3 with a Confederate and a high caliber and a steel wall. Sure, I got lucky, but good luck trying to have good games in tanks like this without getting lucky. Okay, so now we played the most popular medium tank, the most popular tank destroyer, the most popular heavy tank. Now let's play the most popular light tank, and it's the Bat Chatillon 12T. I guess this vehicle is popular not because it's top of the tree, but because it's one of the ways that you have to get towards two desirable lines. The only way that you can get towards the 13105 and the Bat Chat is through the Bat Chatillon 12T. And so this artificially makes this tank more popular than it probably would be, because a lot of people have to play it to unlock two tier 9 tanks. A while ago, before the collector's tanks in World of Tanks, you actually had to end up getting the AMX-30 prototype from this vehicle as well. And so it really ended up with there just being absolute insane requirements for you to play the, the Bat Chatillon 12T when three tier 9 tanks were branching off it. Okay, so spoilers, I don't really have... I haven't played the Bat Chatty on 12T that very, very much since the field mods. So I don't have a second set of equipment on this tank. I've only got vents, probably coated optics, but stats. It's my one build kind of fits all. And while it's a good one build fits all kind of build, on this kind of a map, I would definitely prefer to use a vision system. 
and maybe an exhaust with coated optics, something like that, to be able to really enhance my spotting. The Bat Chatillon 12T is this kind of like pseudo damage dealer, pseudo uh, spotter. It's not like the best of spotters, and it's not the best of damage dealers, but it's a way better damage dealer than other tier 8 light tanks. Okay, so pretty sus. Somebody's in those bushes, that's for sure. And I wonder if he's got a better vision system than me and better camo than me. Um, trees fell here. I'm going to say trees fell here. Someone is in those bushes. I need to just get to my side a little bit. Luckily, we're getting some good vision at the start of the battle. Yes. There he is. There's the LT. Must have been the LT that gave away his position. Interesting that he's already falling back. Well, I'm not going to give away this position. Oh, it's so tempting. It's so tempting. It's so tempting. It's so tempting. Oh, I can't resist. I love shooting things in World of Tanks. But um, luckily they disappeared just before there was an opportunity to do so. There's two G-Saw 1010s on the enemy team. and Those vehicles will do very nasty things to me. I really don't want to get caught out by the G-Saw 1010s. This guy should reverse now. Oh, that is not it. This gun is ugly. I got spotted. There they are. I said the G-Saw 1010s would do ugly things to me, and that's exactly what they did. Now I've given up my position, unfortunately. With both, both G-Saw 1010s over there, I'm in a lot of trouble now, actually, when I think about it. I probably, if I had a vision system, I would have probably spotted those G-Saw 1010s because they really don't have very good camera rating. With a vision system, I'd been able to um, punish them uh, when they move or alternatively when they, uh, even maybe where they just sit in the bush. Okay. Um, G-Saw 1010s pushing up. Do they spot me? Doesn't look like they do. Is it too sus to go into this bush again? Maybe it's super sus to go into this bush again. I feel like I have to. We're just going to take our time to see how this game develops before we can envelop our opponents with hopefully a flanking play, which is what you want to do in these sneaky French tanks, right? So this tank is all about... It's like an opportunist. That's an opportunity. Will this cost me... Oh, my lord. I cannot honestly believe my team hit him just before I did. Am I going to hit anything in this tank? This is with vert stabs. Oh, my lord. Batchat, don't you want to show people how much of a good damage dealer you are in World of Tanks? Don't you want people to play you more than you've already been played? Oh well. Where's this TVP? I've just got his backside. Oh, I should have shot that G-Saw. Bad reactions by me. My fault. There's a Borask who's called Spotless, by the way. Well, looks like it's going to be tricky to find Spotless here. Oh, there he is. So he was waiting in those positions. Nice one shot into him. Got to watch out that I don't get clubbed by the G-Saw here. Or the filthy piglet at the back of the map. At least we now know where the SPG is. This game's neck and neck. I probably shouldn't have fired at that G-Saw there. I just traded 362 of my hit points for only 173 of his. It's tough though when you're playing on this map. Because you want to try and get your shots in. You don't want to die for them, don't get me wrong. But you want to get your shots in. When you're playing an autoloader, you're a tank of great opportunity as well, right? I did some damage. I did double damage. Of course, because I'm shooting a German medium tank that I penetrate all three rounds, right? <laughs> Alright, unfortunately, it looks like we're losing the heavy tank fight. But we're kind of winning the medium tank fight. And I've got a tough decision to make. This LT-432 is a bit of an enigma. Looks like he's gone through the other flank. Um, if I push, do I get spotted from above? You know what? I think I just have to sit here and then spot these heavies as they push for my TDs. I think that's my plan. When these guys push across here, they get exposed into this area. I'm going to tell this guy to fall back. You've got to, got to get out of there, dude. You've got to get out of there. TVP, drop, drop back, dude. You gotta drop back, TVP. You gotta get out of there, dude. The Borask is gonna find you in a second, and then you won't be able to shoot for me as all of these tanks cross. Um. Okay. Maybe I should go forwards and try to get a bit more active vision for my team. I was honestly thinking the heavy tanks were gonna push around here, but it doesn't look like they actually are. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna drop over towards the west. I hope I don't get hit by the Borask here. 
I'd be pretty sad if I did. Ah, he's going to kill me. Yeah, the Borask is sneaky. Hopefully not. Hopefully not. He's still there. Still there. Borask is still there. Nice tr Oh, my good God. Artie, you are really doing a great job. Well done. He is called... Uh, is that Bass Player or Bass Player? 666. Well... Yeah, tricky here with this Borask. And this is the problem with only having one scouting build. If you only have one scouting build, you just I just can't dig a Borask out. The Borask has better camo than me. And better view range than me, probably. Or similar. Let me take a look. This ha Yeah, no, it does have better view range than me. Oh, man. Don't you love Borasks in World of Tanks? You've got to love Borasks in World of Tanks, right? Yep, 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 yep. Very balanced tank. Okay, so now I'm in a now I'm in a bit of a pickle because if I sit here, what's gonna happen? I shoot once, shoot twice. I could push, try and kill the arty. I could drop back and maybe try and spot some of the heavy tanks as they cross for my TDs. Or I could easily manage to finish off my Skoda T27 and then we lose this flank. Oh wow! Okay, he's there. So if the Borask is there, I'm actually gonna go hunting. I think I can hunt the Panther too or hunt the arty. Help me get that panther too, my dude. Help me get that panther too, my dude. Oh, this is tricky. Am I going to risk it? I'll probably get shot by the heavies, but I feel like I've got to risk it right now. An ISU as well. I actually found the RT. RT was up there like a... Like a medium tank. Or a tank destroyer. Why didn't you help me, Mr. Skoda? Can you go around here? I don't think you can. Nice hit. Oh, that Borask is going to be behind me. Unless my Scorpion G hits him. Maybe I can sneak? This is so precarious what I'm doing right now, but that's what I'm going to do. Maybe I can be a bit sneaky? So this game is most likely a loss. I'm just trying to do as oh, much as I can before my grizzly demise. Help me. No! T-34 gets me. Oh well. 3,200 combined. Wasn't enough. What is... What have we learned from this? What we've learned from this is that... And I've learned a lot of this on my free-to-play account. This game is really painful to play until you get the field mod that allows you to select two sets of equipment. On a map like that, I didn't need the vert stabs. I should have used a vision system, maybe even dropped the vents to be able to get an exhaust instead to actually have some real camo. Without an exhaust on this tank, I only have 30% camo. It might also not help that I only have 14% concealment on two of my crews. It's just a reality that you can't drive around and play like a superhero until you actually have all of the things that enable a light tank to play that way. Nevertheless, while this wasn't my biggest winning session, I'm really happy with it anyway. I think this was a good showcase of four fantastic tier 8 tech tree tanks that, while they're not the best, well, I still showed that you can put up some good performances in them and they do have some pretty fun redeeming qualities. Anyway, ladies and gents, boys and girls, that was the most popular tier 8 tanks in the game. Really hope you liked the video, especially that IS-3 game. If you did, give it, a, give it a thumbs up. If you hated it, give it a thumbs down. And if you're watching this video as it's released on Friday, I'm going to be going live all day with new Twitch drop tokens. So you can be able to get a series of rewards, including the T14 Premium Heavy Tank. So, really looking forward to seeing you all live right now on twitch.tv forward slash quickie baby. And as always, thank you so much for watching. You've been epic and hopefully I'll see you soon.